All set. Uh, welcome to the planning board meeting for December 2nd, 2019. Uh, if I can get a motion to approve the minutes from November 18th, I'd appreciate it. Am I so moved? Oh, Chairman. You have yep. to decide who is taking the place of Miriam Sanderson tonight. Is it Kyle again, or is it Bill? I'll let it be Kyle. We'll let Bill rest. All right. We, we'll so call him if we need him. It's also, you do have at least one issue continued from the last meeting, so that might be good for consistency anyway. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. So I'll make a uh, motion to approve the minutes. Thank you, Kyle. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. There are no filings, and we have a Form A plan uh, for 25 Oakhurst Road. I don't see them here yet. Um, you want to just skip over it? Yeah, do, and then come back to it when he shows up. Yep. Okay. And then we have a covenant release for Dudley Drive. In your blue file folder, Bob, we have a um, covenant release. Basically, you already voted to release. This was for the, um, you know, the extension of, what the heck is that? Dudley <laughs> Road. Oh, there it is, right there. I just don't know what that is up there. The Chinese have taken over my letterhead. Um, <laughs> um, all right, so um, Dudley Drive, we extended it. You'll remember yes. Gianni Romeo? Yeah. And you had a covenant in place to make sure that was done. You previously voted to release that. Um, the applicant lost that um, release, so they need you to just revote it, so they can, uh, so you can reendorse it, and it can go on file at the registry. So, just a motion to release the covenant to ensure the construction of the Dudley Drive extension um, at whatever book and page it's at. Okay, I'll make a motion to release the covenant recorded at book five three eight two zero, page ninety four. Second. Any other comments? Nope. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay, then we'll sign those. Uh, Sutton Solar, phase two, surety. We need to endorse a surety agreement. Right, so whenever you have a uh, solar project, um, you uh, execute an agreement that basically says what will happen if they walk away at some time um, during the uh, typical you know, 50 to 25 year term of these projects. So this just <coughs> says under what conditions and how you'll pull their bond. Um, we've already received their bond check that uh, we negotiated. So this is just the agreement that goes with that. So you just need a motion to endorse the surety agreement for Sutton Solar 2, <coughs> which is at 25 Oakhurst Road. That's that second phase of the solar project out there. Am I the only one that signs this, Jen? No. Um, sign everybody it? signs those two documents. Okay. Someone want to make that motion? What was the motion again? To endorse the surety agreement for Sutton Solar 2 at 25 Oakhurst Road. I'll make a motion to endorse the surety agreement. Is that again? Mm -hmm. I'll second that. Okay. Who is your second? Me. So, so initially they've given us five thousand five hundred dollars, and for each year after the tenth year, an additional deposit, mm -hmm. two and a half. So they're going to give us five thousand, roughly five thousand, six thousand dollars a year. Yep. Well, no, five thousand five hundred is is it until year ten. Um, basically, they gave us a decommissioning estimate, and that included. Um, current values for scrap values and stuff, and we went over that during a hearing process and agreed to this amount. Um, and um, our consulting engineer reviewed that as well. So that's the full amount of decommissioning on what's in Sutton. There's also the same amount of money in Northbridge because this one straddles the town line. And, um, and then starting in year 10, we start to increase it for inflation. So when, it's, when we have to get rid of this hazardous waste material, mm -hmm. how's that going to work out? Well, according to the decommissioning agreement and the review by the town's consulting engineer, um, 
it does not, nothing out there qualifies as hazmat in its current form. Um, those panels supposedly will be taken by recycling facilities in their current form and have some value because of the components in them. We so we can see. go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all I can go on. Yeah. So that's how this pilot usually works. Well, this nothing for year five or um, year ten. This isn't a pilot. This is okay. just the surety agreement. The pilot is the payment in lieu of taxes is executed by the selectmen. Right. And that was ex that's a whole separate thing. So this is just okay. if they walk away at some point, if they just cease to operate and walk away and just leave the panels out here, this is our surety. Um, to get rid of the panels, basically. And how many acres of this is in I don't know how many acres, honestly. Um, I think the whole project is 14, so maybe about seven of it is in Sutton. <coughs> and that seven is in phase one and phase two. So this is just for phase two. And for the, the new members of the, of the planning board, the, um, thanks to Jen, it was good planning because this is this is all new stuff and we don't know where it's going to end up but we didn't want to end up with nothing in place it's a guesstimate mm -hmm. as to what it would if for some reason mm -hmm. uh, we weren't using soil anymore we need to make sure that it gets removed and it's, it's on someone else's dime mm -hmm. and that was the, at, at the time which was years ago <coughs> now, at the time that was the best guess uh, that we could come up with so the land will go back to being land without any solar stuff on it um, and they, they agreed well we don't do that for anything else no we don't we don't find anything else to take it down yeah. theoretically the free market should take care of it but, mm -hmm. <coughs> but no one knows where it's going to go right this is just the and they agreed to it because usual at the time and, and everyone was anxious to hop on board so uh, in other towns, because we found out what other towns were doing. Because they're doing it all yeah. so? Yeah, good planning. Yeah. Yeah. I can't say we came up with it. Ooh. Nor did I. I just so read I and motion. do what the industry does. <laughs> motion to endorse the security. Okay. Motion to endorse. But that was by Kyle. The second was by Scott. We had a discussion. Thank you. <coughs> it says this is four acres, actually. Yeah, because um, there's about seven. Okay. That's it for discussion. I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. And we all sign it. I'll sign it. Mm -hmm. okay. Please. Um, Byron Andrews is here if you want him to set up for that Oak Road plant. I'll have to sign it. Up on the Speak of the devil. There you go. There is no Here's the project you are currently voting surety on is on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> There's no correspondence. Um, no. Um, of the 2020. Right. I just need to know if you have any issues with that. If not, we'll get that posted. And then um, I did copy you an article here. Uh, marijuana subpoenas. So these subpoenas are going out right now to various communities to look at their host community agreements. Basically, um, because a lot of towns, this is the um, U.S. Attorney's Office, a lot of towns yeah. are bordering on extortion, basically, on some of these host community agreements. So the U.S. Attorney is actually subpoenaing a whole bunch of them. So um, I just thought it was interesting and that you should have the article. Take it home, Homer. Yeah. All right. Did Wally sign that? Yeah. Oh, this is the one. Oh, Give us one yeah. second. Eh? Okay. I guess we can. Yes, sir. 
next one. All set. Okay. We're all yours, Byron. Okay. Good evening, my name is Byron Andrews. I'm a professional surveyor with Andrews Survey and Engineering. <coughs> Uh, we're looking at the property at 25 Oakhurst Road, also known as One LaSalle Road in Northbridge. And uh, it also has frontage on Main Street in Northbridge. Uh, obviously, you're familiar with the site. Um, we're representing RJR, uh, AJR Realty Trust. Uh, our client would like to separate this parcel into two lots. The yellow line here would be the dividing lot between parcels. Um, the uh, eastern parcel would have uh, the solar arrays on it. These are the existing arrays. These are the proposed arrays. They haven't been built yet. The total parcel area on the east <coughs> is uh, 25 acres. Um, if you subtract um, the areas with an easement, um, it's, uh, um, it's actually, I'm sorry, it's 31 acres. <laughs> if you subtract the easements, it's 25 acres. And uh, if you subtract the solar panels being impervious area, you're left with uh, 24 and a half acres of uh, non-impervious area on this parcel. This parcel here uh, has nothing in place at the time. There's no proposed solar work going on here. Um, so the, t the project would be to separate out this lot here. It would be uh, 4.8 acres. Um, it has uh, 310 feet of frontage in Sutton. Uh, it also has frontage in Northbridge, uh, although that, that uh, frontage is inaccessible. Mm -hmm. You do have my checklist. Um, I think the only thing on my checklist was Oh, no, actually, I corrected everything on my checklist. I did have one question. Oh, it was the um, open space, and you've provided those calculations. Um, we are currently, um, this won't be the final iteration of the plan that you will look at. We have comments from Northbridge. However, we only received some of them today. Um, so what we would like to do is uh, get the board's approval for this lot, uh, sorry, for this plan, we will add, add some information for Northbridge, prepare the mylar, um, get assigned to Northbridge on the 10th, uh, presumably, and uh, then we'll uh, uh, bring the uh, final mylar to uh, Sutton for final approval. No, I guess I was privy to the emails from the Northbridge planner, and I believe all he wanted, other than what you've already shown, is a notation that you won't be accessing over the north for frontage. Correct. That yeah. was it. So yeah. it's pretty minimal. So, you know, I I would recommend there's just no issue with the board uh, approving the plan with the addition of the notations that notation that Northbridge wants. And it's on there. Kind of a no brainer. <coughs> okay, if uh, someone wants to make a motion <coughs> to approve and I get a second we can have a discussion if there is any. So that endorse the plan dated 12 to 19. Um, conditioned on uh, the notations added on the north page. So, Jen, I see here that the tax office stated that they currently owe. Yes, um, it's six dollars and six cents. Yeah, <laughs> so. Be right in yeah, so we still won't release the plan, the physical plan, until the six dollars and sixty-one cents is paid. But yeah. So I'll make a motion to endorse uh, the plan dated. What is it? It's the latest revision date. Twelve two nineteen. Can you condition that on adding the Northbridge notations? Uh, condition on adding the Northbridge notations to it. Do you second? I'll second that. Motion. Thank you, Michael. Any discussion from board members? This is, this, one, this is um, office and light industrial, right? Yep, all our lives. Any discussion from the public? No? Um, hearing none.
then I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained. Continuation. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is 720, and that's a public hearing for the earth removal. No, we have a 710. 710, I'm sorry, oh, missed it. There we go. <laughs> 710, we're behind. We have a public hearing for a definitive subdivision modification. I'm very sorry. Wow. We'll catch up. Yeah, if you can read that notice, thank you. No, no, you don't need to because this is continued, right? Is it continued? Is it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It should have said continued. Oh, no, should have said continue. I don't know. Um, one of them is the mile order that was open to Smets, so I'll just have that for review as well. We can share. Yeah, we can share. Yeah, we can share. Yeah, we can share. Yeah, we can Zachary Gluss, I'm one of the uh, project surveyors for existing grade, representing um, TJ Mitchell Builders. Um, in the, I know this was before you guys uh, a couple weeks ago, so we've made a couple revisions. I don't know if you want me to kind of start from scratch or just address what we have kind of done to go forward here. Mm -hmm. um, basically, the extent of it was, I know there were some concerns over how the proposed right-of-way line for LaPlante Way had wrapped around and we left about a one-foot gap between the right-of-way and the property line, so we've eradicated that. In, went tangent up to the property line to make it so that there is no portions of this parcel that would be, in essence, inaccessible. Good planning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So and, um, the, the additional waivers that we're going to be requesting on top of the ones that were previously approved would be to install concrete monuments as opposed to granite, and then to um, allow a center line radius of less than 270 feet to kind of work with how we're proposing to develop this lot. And then I think we should vote one more just to be safe, and that would be from five, uh, section four, uh, letter or number five B, and that's about the cul-de-sac diameter. So you had previously voted it for that diameter you saw in the first iteration, and now you have a whole different geometry on that uh, cul-de-sac. It's not an issue, um, but you should vote that waiver to the geometry on the cul-de-sac that you see on this plan for this plan. So I would vote that waiver just um, to make sure you are safe. That is, here, let me make sure I get your letters right. Section 4, 4A, 4A5B, 4A, section 5B. And that's about a cul de sac diameter. So, we're doing the, the adjusting the geometry of the cul de sac for what's still part of the plan. Okay, and I have comments from the fire department and from the police department. Did I already read those into the record? Okay. Losing track. All right. And the taxes have been paid. So I have a letter here from Nick Newnamark, but that's dated November 9th. So I'll ask the planning board members if you have any other questions or comments or concerns. Mm -hmm. 
Hearing none. Comments from the public? That additional waiver, and then um, if you're going to approve the modification of minimum conditions, I've suggested in my memo that I wrote to you. So just those two motions. Does someone want to make that motion? Or a five B to allow cul-de-sac cul-de-sac geometry um, consistent with the plan that you see there. <coughs> so make a motion to grant a waiver for. Section 4A5B to allow the geometry of the cul de sac. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Didn't we already vote waivers for the concrete? Yep, you already yep. did those okay. at the last meeting. So now you just have a motion to approve the modification, to disapprove the modification, or to approve the modification with conditions. That's the one I would recommend. And the minimum conditions on your planning board. We do have a memo. Memo, oh. three at the bottom, you suggest? Yes, I think, yeah, unless you can think of more. Yep. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to approve the subdivision modification with minimum conditions that all previously granted waivers and conditions of approval remain in full force in effect. All previous and new conditions of approval must be added to the plan prior to endorsement. And three after endorsement or recording three full size copies of the plan and one PDF copy shall be provided to the planning department as well as one electronic copy to the assessor's office and CAD or a form specified by them. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Well done. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close that hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Most opposed? Thank you. Now we have the 720. We made up some time. We sign things, Jen? Sign things? Uh, what one was that? We'll plant way. Oh no, it's got an appeal period yeah, and then we will sign it. Then, then it comes Ken, in. Ken, do you get this? What is, is that the mylar for the, just the? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the mylar. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Public hearing notice, December 2nd, 2019, 720, meeting room 1C. In accordance with the provisions of section 5.7A of the Sutton Earth Remover Bylaw, before issuing a new permit, the board shall hold a public hearing after giving at least 14 days notice at the time and place thereof. Such notice to be by advertisement and newspaper of general circulation in the town and by certified mail to all our buddies as they appear upon the most recent tax list and, the, and to the Conservation Commission of the Town of Sutton. Pine Grand and Savile has applied for an earth removal permit renewal for the above stated parcels of land. Again, the hearing will be held in the third floor of the Sutton Town Hall on Monday, December 2nd, 2019. Thank you, Michael. probably mentioned uh, before you start thank you for coming in for the multitudes that are watching at home <laughs> Sutton had earth removal board because a whole lot of earth got removed from Sutton uh, because it's good gravel to build things like the Mass Pike in Boston but then they stopped building and because we had a planning board meeting that was scheduling meetings and no one was showing up uh, we were asked by the selectmen to take on the responsibilities um, of course we said yes and then 
for myself and other board members uh, we, we go out and try to learn about the residential school by visiting the sites I went to Pine for the residential I had no idea what we had taken on and it's um, from my seat I'm amazed at what you were doing and how big it was and how you managed slopes yeah. at wells it, it just it's easy to talk about it. it's another thing to be out there and see see how it's actually happening and I think that all that's happening next to a residential area next to next to 146 I don't know how you pull it all off to tell you the truth well I'm not sure either. yeah <laughs> <laughs> lucky so they have to come in and uh, remove their uh, and renew their earth removal plans right yes that was good and uh, thank you for having us tonight um, mm -hmm. for the record my name is John Federico with Barrier and Helmont uh, tonight I'm representing our applicant uh, Mary Bedoyan um, and her project um, that is being uh, run by Pine Sand and Gravel um, at uh, I have an address here uh, sorry about that I do not have an address on here specifically for it um, but um, as far as um, this uh, whole uh, operation goes um, we're continuing or essentially are renewing our active permit that we have um, from my understanding, every two years we come in to the board just to do an actual hearing for it. Um, since last year, there's been approximately uh, 30,000 uh, or so um, cubic uh, yards of earth that has been removed from there. Um, some of that was imported in, sorted, and then uh, re removed from the site. Um, some of it was actually from the site itself. Um, I know um, I did try to schedule something with Jen a little bit earlier um, prior to submitting everything. Unfortunately, we didn't have a chance to link up on that. Um, but I was able to go out with the uh, manager of the site to uh, check three monitoring walls out there. Um, all levels uh, were within a few inches of previous years. And then uh, I do uh, have an understanding that uh, Jen, uh, Mr. Lenard, and a few members of the board um, were also out of the site most recently. Um, the photos that you have in front of you are from the uh, drone flyovers that have been done recently for the site. Um, one of them is reflecting uh, 2018, I believe it's December, and then one of them is most recently in November of this year. Um, as far as operations go, uh, there are three areas of the site that are uh, currently active. Um, section A is located um, just uh, north of the town line, Section B being a little further up, and Section C being the closest to Route 146. Um, there has been a little bit of disturbance that has occurred in both Section A and Section B. Section C currently does remain undisturbed. Um, right now we are several feet above um, the level that we're supposed to be taking everything down to there. Um, so as of right now, we would just like to um, have our permit continue, or sorry, um, have the permit, um, uh, I guess, is it would be continued? It reissued for reissued, one year. Sorry about that. Um, to uh, allow everything to continue out here. Um, from Mr. Leonard um, recently telling me, um, uh, the site has been currently sprayed down um, using some sort of and you might yeah, want to go into some polymer to seal up anything exposed for the winter because we can't water if the temperatures are below freezing. So hydrographs technology sprayed about six acres, seven acres last week, and that is supposed to last up to six months. So just to make it every attempt we can to keep any dust down through the winter. And then I know as part of the application and some of the write-ups that we had recently submitted for the project, um, as far as any sort of time frame or when everything will be completed out here, um, it is based year to year on the demand of the site. Um, so it's slightly hard to estimate, but um, as of right now, uh, we are still looking at about uh, 92,000 cubic yards, which would be removed from the current active area of approximately 5.8. Uh, What's your first name? My name is John. John, okay. Uh, any board members, comments? Did you? Yeah, two questions. I thought I saw someone in it was it was three years was the permit. Is it one year, two year, or three years? One year. We, yeah, we come every year. It's every year. Right, so it's a new permit every other year, and the in between year is just a renewal. So if every unless something's messed up in the original permit year you pretty much just get your renewal okay. there's no public hearing notice in that second year so it's technically kind of a two-year okay. permit but there's like an, an update in december I remember of, sitting here about this time around yes yes yeah, so you're just coming in for an update so um bill as you noted um bob uh kyle and bill 
did come out on the site with um, Andy and I and the images I have up here um, Andy can kind of tell you more where they are in the thing if he on the plan if you want him to roughly they're all in the same general area yeah. um, that's kind of turning around coming back yeah those are all if you can see in the what this plan the shadow I apologize for the shadow but we drone the site every month all the property and then we can quantify piles and areas uh, see things uh, that we normally wouldn't see but that line one is coincidentally the town line and it's also the property line between the debris family on the south and the Bedoin family mm -hmm. who John's representing tonight um, so I believe that area there is the area C that mm -hmm. you can just faintly see oh, yeah. mm -hmm. no and that <laughs> I think all of these are in the same general yeah. area. This was a that's the loan pile here that mm -hmm. has growth on it. That stockpile loan for the future restoration. And that's up in this area right here. Right. So that that's was the leaving area C, heading towards B and A. Mm -hmm. I think this is another <coughs> similar one. Yep. That's the same. Yep. And then that was looking into that area. That's yes, looking into area B. So uh, John had said that we've taken out approximately 30,000 cubic yards. The majority of that is in area B. So because of the height of that, um, I measured, uh, we, so with the drone photos uh, and the software we have, we can measure piles, volumes, and areas, and distances. So even though we took out 30,000 yards, the footprint that we um, disturbed was probably only in the area of five or 6,000 square feet, but because of the height of it. Mm -hmm. So we're not disturbing much. We're not, um, we're, we're not utilizing this pit only as demand, um, and we use this for a certain type of ground. Is that it for a photo? Yeah, I didn't have a time. We're also, uh, if you're looking from year to year, from December um, 11 to no, uh, 18 to the 23rd of this year, if you look at area A, you will see a bigger footprint there. And that's a sandy fill. Area B is a gravel. And uh, we've taken a little bit more of the uh, sandy fill out of area A, if you're looking at footprint versus footprint. Mm -hmm. So, Jen, um, I made the mistake of showing everybody our drone stuff. So <laughs> I didn't see the drone. <laughs> I didn't so see the drone. Jen I asked if we, <laughs> and I did a pour, this is my uh, yep. pour, I tried to get a blow up, but I couldn't do yeah, it. Yeah, it's, so. it's pretty anyway, neat when you go in the office, the screen's like ginormous, yeah. <laughs> and it's broadcasting right on there, and you can see how the software will surround the edges of a pile and calculate the cubic yards that are in that pile based on the elevations and everything. It's it's pretty neat. So, so Bill, you went? Yeah, yeah I went. Kyle. Uh, yeah. Which is, what did you think? It was cool. Definitely informative. Yeah, I just have one question, Jen. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you guys kept talking about the, the test wells. Yeah. So I what, did, what does that what does that tell you, and how does it tell you, and how does it work? So as far as the uh, monitoring wells go, essentially it's just a, a six-inch PVC pipe. Um, some of them might be anywhere 15 to 20 feet deep or so. And essentially that's just dug into the ground and placed in there. Um, that pipe is then perforated um, the whole entire length to allow groundwater to infiltrate in while holding back much of the soils that are surrounding it. And essentially, um, as the water level fluctuates, um, you have a um, area inside the pipe which you can easily get access to to determine the water level. Um, GNH has um, a sensor on a, essentially a tape measure um, that will buzz as soon as it does touch that water level. Um, initially, uh, we did have, I believe it was five um, test wells um, that were actively being monitored. Um, three of them um, were monitored in several years um, just due to the proximity of where it is compared to active excavation. Um, per some recent comments that I believe um, either the board has issued or came from Jen, um, we did make a revision to the plan that you do have in front of you today. Um, we will make sure that we can get you a stamp copy on that um, where we just uh, re-edited the information that was in that initial table to be a little bit more clear and concise for what we're showing there now. All right, so to John's comment, if you 
I'll zoom on the screen. So you can see where the active area is. You see it's over here. Yeah. The wells that were on the table included these two that are kind of the closest to the excavation. And one of those, it's my recollection, one of those got messed up. And you can't get the probe down to even 10 feet down from the casing edge. So they sunk that other one. And that's the one that's primarily measured that. Um, 2015 too. So that's the most, the closest, most important one right now. As you shift, you can see the other monitoring wells. See, they did monitor this one, but it's way away. It's near the restoration area. And then you've got this other one that's super way away. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to be monitoring those ones that are so far away from where things are going on. So that was one of the questions I proposed to the board was, um, as you get closer to 146, the finish elevations um, get to their closest to the groundwater table. You've got a 375 um, in there, and actually kind of on the edge of this area, you've got a 371, I think, finish elevation. So does the board think another monitoring well should be, should be installed closer to the active excavation area, I think you're about 300 feet away with the closest well right now, or are you good with just monitoring this well, which has been fairly consistent with the elevation of that nearby wetland you see there, um, and, um, and the kind of the other wells in the area. Um, I was gonna ask you, I forgot to ask you, where are, are there monitoring wells on the Douglas side closer to this excavation or no? Um, not that I'm aware of the board. I believe those monitoring wells were placed up there due to the proximity to the wetland. Okay. Um, but this project um, was started well before I became involved with it, so I'd mm -hmm. have to um, check with somebody um, who was a part of that portion of the process. So, but I, I have to, we have to go before the uh, Douglas. Douglas board, I think they're going to request one on the debris property. Yeah. But these, when, when you guys are saying wells, I thought these were like artesian wells. And they no, they're just, go, they're just. I think they answer your question. So Sutton is 10 feet from yeah. groundwater. We require to a separation of so 10 feet. So you don't get down too close to the groundwater and risk um, polluting it or, or, or just okay. disrupting. That, also, the gra enhances groundwater. future development. Mm -hmm. Right. So. This is just testing what the groundwater is. Yeah, where's the groundwater? To right. make sure they maintain that okay. separation Thank that's you. required for the bylaws. I get it. I get it now. That's yeah. And if you got too too close to the groundwater, you might I have mean, a, wouldn't you know I'd have a pond? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it behooves you to make sure you Yeah, most towns in this area are ten feet, some will be four feet sometimes. Well how okay. much fluctuation I'm sorry. Oh the groundwater? Yeah. I don't think it fluctuates this much with the wetland now. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's what your issue with the wetland, because the wetland sm will smooth it out, or it'll accept. Well, the wetland, the level of the wetland tends to be kind of where the ground level water is, because okay. you're so, see how close the monitoring well is uh, to the wetland edge? All right, I understand that. So that, they tend to be just about the same, pretty close to each other, mm -hmm. that surface level of the, or the high water of the wetland anyways. With the, with the groundwater well. But so my question that I, I just need you to answer is, you see the gray area on the bottom, that is, they are allowed to be active in that area. We've never closed out that permit. And then we gave them an additional active area, the 2020 active area. Um, so they, they can work in all of that area. They tend to only be mainly working in the 2020 area. Um, and you can see the closest monitoring well is this one right there which is 300 feet away. So you've got nothing, nothing on the, on the Sutton line near the ex excavation. You've got kind of nothing near the highway layout. So it's up to you guys. I mean, um, I thought we had a bigger separation in, to groundwater on the finish. And what I, was, what I was looking at was existing elevations of some of these piles to groundwater, which is 40 and 50 yeah. feet, you know? So I was looking at the wrong elevations. The finish elevations to groundwater will be pretty close to 10 feet. So they'll be skimming it, um, almost as close as they do at Worcester Sand in aggregate, but. 
they just have a lot bigger piles out here. You had two questions, Bill. Did they both get answered? Yeah. Well, what if you put a what if you put a well right on the line? That'll satisfy Douglas and Sutton. Yeah, I think when I suspect talking with Bill Conda that we'll have to put one, which I think would be in this general area. Well, be right about here because there's still soil here, mm -hmm. but uh, that'll. We'll have to go down to groundwater, so I don't know what elevation we're at there, but uh, it'll probably be 30, 40 feet deep. It's up to you guys. Isn't, is that further away than the 300? Well, the gray area is also active excavation. They're just not, oh. I don't know what you're doing in that area. It is allowed to be excavated. What are you doing in the gray area right now? No. Taking some sandy fill from the okay. kind of Douglas Debris angle, but not really from Sutton right now. Uh, well, a little bit. That's that area. Oh, right up front. Is that area? Um, Did I have a picture? Area A. Yep. I didn't we're have taking a some there, so we'll probably the town of Douglas will ask us. We would put one probably in this area, as close to the town line as we could get if it would serve both purposes. What do you think? Is that too far well, away that's from where you're? Well, that's what what they think. Uh, Wally, you get this out. What do you think about another well? Uh, another monitoring well that is an artesian. I don't know if it's my first time addressing this kind of a problem. Well, we could, we could very easily pull one in on the Sutton side down below, closer okay. to the excavation. Obviously, yeah. I just, I, w I want it in a location where it will, you know, I don't want to in, in the way of the work you're going to do, right, obviously, no. um, but close enough to the work where you're yeah. getting a reading that's we could that serve uh, some purpose. <laughs> yeah, get one down in this area here, relatively oh, easily. Where is that? That's well in, in the area. Uh, in terms of that map, where in is the it? area of B? Where where is that on? Um, I'm thinking that's B is going to be more than this area. Yeah, right up in this area here. Get it up towards the current face. This doesn't represent the current face, uh -huh. right? I think uh, that excavation. Go ahead. Well, uh, that doesn't represent the uh, right. That's Tell us what you'd like. like. Yeah. I think that would be a better solution yeah. than the one down in the, why in the we, corner there. Why don't we do that? And in addition, it would give you it give you a readout on what's really going on over there, as opposed to a year, a couple of years from now. Now there's another kind yeah. of a problem. Because it went too deep, and right. there's not enough elevation. Yep. Whatever the appropriate word is. Scott, <clears throat> I don't think it matters to me, but I have some questions. <coughs> um, <coughs> I noticed that there's no that there's no no groundwater at elevation 361, for example, when the ground elevation is at 371. So you only go down. You don't drop a sensor until you find water. You only go down 10 feet and say there is no groundwater well, at 10 feet down? So as far as that goes, I know it's one of the things that Jen mentioned, um, the pipes, because they are um, perforated, there should be typically some sort of like a filter fabric that would go around to prevent soil or anything from getting in there. Sometimes, you know, like a chipmunk or something could potentially get in there. Um, you know, just soil could over the years slowly just start to kind of fill it up. So you might not always get to that groundwater if there is some sort of obstruction in there. But generally, though, um, when they are installed, it is put in deep enough that you do have that fluctuating level. It's probably got soil blocking it or something. This groundwater, this one over here, monitoring well, S8? Um, S8 was a, a very um, older well that was used out there. Um, I don't believe um, that was one that was most recently monitored at all. <laughs> but when it was, the last time, it's, it's actually um, for eight feet below ground level, according to this data. Which, which one is that one? Um, <coughs> S8 is... I think it's way over, isn't it? Way over? Located right about over there, yeah. So the ground is at 386, elevation is at 394, whenever that was taken. Eight feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About eight feet. <coughs> so. And that's in restoration area, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Supposed to be what, 10 feet? Yeah, it's supposed to be 10 feet. Yeah, that would. Um, that was pre you guys. That was before you guys were the. Yeah, but now we are the guys. Yeah. 
So you can ask him to remodel to that and stick on two feet if it's still too low. Well, it says by others, but it's on this property, right? It's part of this permit, I would right. suspect. Yeah, I, I've never looked at, I've used that as a benchmark, but I've never uh, really paid attention to it. So that, yeah, so that's well, saying the proposed by. grade is three nine. So what's that saying? Is that our monitoring well, that one, S8? Um, I'm honestly not too sure. Um, I'd have to double check with my Because we something. have one that's a, uh, that's supposed to be a toe of slope from the wastewater treatment plant, which is right there. That the town operates? That's the town operates. I mean, but that one's not on our property. Yeah, but the leach so fields, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because here's so the cemetery. Yeah, that looks like, uh, so this is down slope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right there. Is right this there. Okay. So, so extent, I imagine it hasn't been. This area has not been. From my understanding, this area hasn't been touched at all. So, so that's um, something we should redrill and look at it because. Well, are you going to excavate? Yeah, eventually now? Mary will come in, um, and want to do something heading this way. I could swear, even though it's not on our property, that's that's one we monitor relative to our, but I can double check that. Because there's, there's, we were required to monitor one in relation to our wastewater treatment plant just up above, though that's not on our property that well. Because it looks like the waste, the waste field, the leach field's like it's about 600. 35, 40 feet higher. Mm -hmm. I would lead to believe that that could be one of yours because we also have an S9 that's also by others a little bit further to the west in that case. Um, mm -hmm. Both of those look to be, you know, roughly same, um, you know, parallel line almost going across. Yeah, per I'll sewer department the, uh, records, it says on that one. Yeah. S9 says per sewer department records. Yeah, so I'll ask Donald Wachowski about those two and just see. So I mean, they're not on our property, but if they were ours or installed by us relative to the wastewater treatment plant, though it's, it seems odd that they would be on somebody else's land if there are wells, but I know we do do monitoring out there. Um, it has something to do with the wastewater treatment plant. Thank you, Scott. So S8 is an area that hasn't been disturbed? Disturbed, yeah, because I was thinking of what we were looking at for restoration was that's the flat area in gray there that top area is that flat area this is a remember when we went when we drove in like this and there was that flat area and i said hey the monitoring walls are over there that's that gray area is that big flat area and and then it, it gets real hilly so yeah i don't think that area has been touched where that monitoring wall is yeah that's something we should incorporate in the future uh, yeah if you're going to go that way and re probably redrill that Mm -hmm. Drill another one. All right, so you're okay with installing another one closer to the active excavation? Um, I'll, ask, I'll ask other board members, and I'll, I'll speak. Um, I, can, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be good planning uh, and make good sense to, to put in at least one on the monitoring wall where, where, you, if, where you plan on going. Uh, it, is, it should serve you as well as it should serve us. It's... Um, I find myself sitting here, uh, it's like checking your tires before you take a road trip and checking through them and not the fourth. Well, once you've walked, once you've <laughs> walked around, kick the other tire too and make sure it looks sure. good. Don't it, uh, so if it's, uh, it, it seems to be a good idea. Be happy to. Mike? Yeah, no, I, uh, I would agree with what Bob just said. Uh, I feel bad I missed the tour. I would have to have seen it. Looks kind of, looks kind of cool, you know. Always um, next year. <laughs> yeah, next year. We'll plan around. But uh, says to do a well, is that expensive? Like that? Uh, I think what's this the one in this area, we could probably excavate with a so with a backhoe. Right. Yeah. And that's a backhoe, that's that fails, we'll have to when we uh, we much just much. had a drill rig in there. We were testing. You know, we do soil cores to see what right. what to expect and. Uh, um, what I should have done then was he, he has the ability to put the wells in too. So if we can't excavate it, we probably have to get him back for the Douglas to comply with Douglas. We would do this one at the same time. Yep. Good. Uh, 
No comment on that. Now, what he puts that. down is like an inch and a half, two inch far. Yeah, I don't think there's a particular standard as long as we can get yeah. the information we need. Well, that, that gives you marching instructions. <laughs> I would I would think too. So here we have data from 1031, which was just last week, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, a month ago. Mm -hmm. But all the walls should be on here. Uh, originally, all the walls were on there, and. Um, and, and I had them pull them off. <laughs> that's something that if, if we do want to have them shown back on there, I can definitely add them back in, not a problem at all. I had them pull off the one directly adjacent because it would have jammed. I know that that well got jammed well, with debris, fine. so it made no point. Well, they, yeah. And then the other ones were farther away. But if you want them all back mm -hmm. on there. So is there a bylaw requirement that they have X number of wells per acre or? No, like just in proximity so to the excavation as you, as you see fit, basically. I'm glad you can read the map. <laughs> I, would, I would think if you're trying to model a site, you'd have to have a few of them, not not just one that you're using. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the tricky part is getting them in so they're not in the way of the work you're doing. And out here, you know, it, when you look at it, you're like, oh, just install one over there. And then you look at the existing elevation to where they're going to, and you're like, Okay, the top elevation is at 435. <laughs> that's a bit wrong <coughs> well. Oh, <okay. laughs> yeah. So that's the trickiness with getting these monitoring wells in. It's so it, ma it makes sense. It sounds like they're going to put in at least one more monitoring well, and if they can tell you where that is. Yeah, yeah it needs to be put on the plan. Give us the area yeah, yeah, located. Right. Would that be something, Jen, that you would want to see in before in. we yeah. submit any plans? No, or they can special. condition it that, you know, you need to have the well in by a certain this date. Like yeah. Yeah. Monitor things. Yeah. And yeah. then if you want to do a you want read, want read on, on that well, you can let me know when, it, and I can drag Mike out with us so he can see the sign. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and or Wally, because I know Wally wanted to catch it. So I need yeah, a motion to approve a one-year earth removal permit for pine sand. Um, with a with that one condition. Well, there's actually there's three general conditions. Okay, let's do it. And then there's two specials, and then you would add that monitoring well condition. I'll pull them up so you guys know what. So what is want to make, yeah. I'll make a motion to renew the grant or the um, earth removal permit for another year. The general conditions that one failure to comply with all conditions of this permit and all sections of the town of Sutton Earth Removal Bylaw, which are a part of this permit and are attached herewith, may result in a cease and desist order and or fines. Two, approval of all other applicable local, state, and federal agencies with a copy of said decisions permits provided to the planning board. Three, no drilling or blasting allowed in any of the pit. Two special conditions. Wells. One, maintain appropriate dust control measures to prevent blowing onto Route 146 and or adjacent properties. Two, bond of calendar year 2020 must be received prior to 12-31-2019 and that there be a new monitoring well but in closer to the active site. Thank you, Kyle. Need a second. Second. Any further discussion? Let's see a bond value for 2020. Um, I honestly uh, don't know. It's over a hundred thousand. It's um, I mean we didn't redo it for this year. We were just going on last year's bond, um, but I believe it's well over a hundred thousand. Sure. So if it's something other than what we currently have, which I don't know either, Jen, we'll mm -hmm. just renew it. Yeah, you just need to renew it. I think. Yeah. Um, Tammy called you or talked to you about it, but maybe not. Um, sure. I don't believe specifically in right. the bond. Well, I know she did reach out about the plan. What I can do is just ha have her scan last year's bond and send it to both of you, and then you just need to reach out and make sure that gets renewed. Okay. So. And that covers what? Just reclamation? Mm hmm. In case these guys want yep. to Yep. Just stabilization, basically. Stabilization. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so let me just make sure I got that. Kyle. Was the motion? Who was the second? Scott. Scott was the second. And no vote yet. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Got it. Ben. And a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Thank you. Get a second. I'll second it. All those in favor? 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Good job, John. And do you have a particular period of time when you want them to install the monitor in the well by or? I say we wait, see if Douglas requires them to put in one so that they can do both at the same time that mm -hmm. be more okay. cost effective for them. And okay. So you just need to keep us posted and I'll be in touch with um, Bill anyways okay. over in Douglas. Thanks Thank you. In. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, I'll write that up. Get it out. I think that drone thing is pretty cool. If you can measure it. Way. <laughs> I told you. Again, we're not getting one for the town. Oh, come on. Well, the fire department she'll, has she'll one. Never they do, do a, some shots Never do a site now. visit again. She'll just send her drone. <laughs> <on> <laughs> <the> drone. <laughs> <laughs> we have a 7.30 public hearing uh, scheduled for an accessory apartment at 166 eight lots road but we haven't seen or heard from anybody from anyone uh, so we hope all is well and I'd like a motion to continue this uh, to December 16th I'd make a motion to continue to December 16th Thank you. the time 710 at 710 I'll second it oh, okay. thank you all those in favor Aye. Aye. opposed abstain we need a motion to adjourn it. Ooh. Okay, oh. through the chairman, may I ask a, our esteemed leader a question? Sure. Then, in, in the news between the Telegram Gazette and the Chronicle, at Cordis Mills, when it changed hands, I don't know if it was due to changing hands, the all the affordable units got re got either stopped. I don't know if it stopped because mm -hmm. of the sale, but I guess my question is. What, is that applicable to all these uh, affordable units that we have required in all these projects that we have done? No. Um, Cordis Mills was financed and built through a mass development um, affordable house, or, or I shouldn't even say affordable housing, a mass development housing grant. That particular form of approval only it required that there be a certain percentage of affordable units for a period of 15 years. At the end of 15 years, whoever owned it at the time, in this case a new owner, had the right to abolish all of those affordable units. So all of the affordable units we have approved were developed um, in accordance with Chapter 40B. 40B requires a minimum 30 year um, affordability time frame, and then we often try to work something into the comp permit that whoever's in charge at the time will automatically renew at the 30-year juncture so that you basically have units affordable in perpetuity. Um, uh, we'll be actually having some, or I will be having some discussions about a potential future affordable housing development with the selectmen shortly, and that's one of the questions I fully anticipate them bringing up. So I actually did reach out to uh, Maureen O'Hagan, she's with um, a group called MHOC, and I reached out to Mass Housing Partnership. Um, to get any more detail they can provide us with on making sure we avoid those pitfalls and do whatever we need to do in our paperwork and our approvals so that we don't end up twofold by people who are in affordable units being left out in the cold literally in this case and losing those units out for our affordable housing inventory after we've made those right. gains. Right. So I expect actually even more detailed information than that, a more comprehensive answer. But the short answer was, those are not 40B units at Cordes Mills. They were developed under a different financing program, and that allowed them to convert completely to market rate at 15 years. Is that what 15 years? This expired? year, this uh, 2020. So they sold it. Uh, yeah. So that's the deal with that. That's what happened. I thought I was running a D or something. I was, I was gonna say it's that. recorded at the call. registry of the deeds. Yeah. That whole. Yeah. What about those condiments guy? Like uh, Forest Edge. Forest Edge, it's in their deed, yeah. So the that's in perpetuity. Yeah. yeah, and they're also approved under what's called the local, um, local initiative units only application with the state. So all of that's recorded at the registry, and then the deeds contain the notations. Okay. Thank you. The next meeting is the 16th. We need a motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. So move. Thank you. I'll second that motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained. Aye. Well done. Everybody drive careful, please.